Man, I got all type of playlists, man. No, yeah, yeah. You said something about a battle. What's up? Hey, we can do it whenever. We, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you, you, said, you sure I, mentioned the battle. Hey, I got them locked and loaded. I got them locked and loaded. I'm locked and loaded. I'm telling you now, I got I got the old school vibes. I give you the 90s, Earth. You know what I'm saying? I go back to the Isley Brothers, 2000 yeah. R&B, 2000 rap down south. Got the got the pimp the pimp music, you know, eight bar MJ, MJG. You know, I got everything. I don't, I don't, you know, yeah. All that sounds slick, my guy. Oh, that sounds real slick. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if you got enough chin here though, bro. Hey, I don't, know, I don't know if you got enough chin here. I don't know if you deep enough in the game. Man, my bag deep. Make sure you man. like this video okay. and I, subscribe. I, I, hey, I've been with, been with grandpa. I've been with my grandpa too much. I know. I know too much. <laughs> <laughs> I got him you. between him, Unc, and Pops. I know too much. Okay, bet. Okay, I'm gonna let you live then. I ain't gonna do nothing to you. Um, I mean, I asked this question to everybody who come on initially, bro. Um, before we actually start everything, what are you watching right now? Like, what's 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 in your bag right now as far as series, movies, whatever? What you got? What you got planned right now? To Sundays, I'm tuned in. Uh, Power with Tommy, the Force. A lot of people say they don't like it, but you know I'm a I'm a fan of Tommy though, so you know I'm rocking with it. Uh, Euphoria that come on on Sundays, it just ended, but okay. I was tuned in to that. Uh, you know, of course, all the other powers with you know the Big Meech, yep. uh, with Ghost, you know, uh, with Tyreek, and what else I was I was just tuned into. But really, y'all here, you know, we got the Netflix, so. Yeah. And, you know, I'd be, I be in it watching, like, the little international. Like, we got the events in Anna. That's a little Netflix series out right now. I've been tuned into that. Okay. Um, really a lot of stuff, man. I'd be on Netflix did you, heavy. Did you uh, check out the Bel Air thing? And that, that, that's the one I was on the tip of my tongue that I've been trying to say. I, I like it. I like the whole concept of it. I, 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 I've been messing with it. Me too. Me too. I'm a fan of it, too. A lot of people don't like it because they feel like it's – it's taken away from um, the the original, but it's not meant to be. Yeah. There. It ain't meant to it, be that. And that's is that's the whole point. And they miss. Right. I feel like they missing the message. Like it's like it's what's going on in today's world. You know what I'm saying? Exactly it, bro. So yep. Like, yep, that's exactly it. But people don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? They only understand what the original was and can't get with the concept. Like, yo, this is going on. Like you said. Oh, exactly. You no, yeah. all these all these social issues. Okay, you turn it on. That's a lot better. Yep. All these social issues and shit like that that's going on right now, they can attack that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's dope, bro. But um, yeah, man. Let me go ahead and intro this real quick, my G. Okay. Let me go ahead and intro this. New viewers, welcome. Returning viewers, welcome back Fuck. to Baseline the Gold Line. I am your humble host, Alan Covizzi Colburn. And in the building right now, if y'all from the area, y'all know this face, man. Y'all know this face. Marquette point guard, Texas A&M point guard, two-time state champion in high school, pro basketball player, Dwayne Swaggy Dude Wilson is in the building. What up, my G? What it do? What it do? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good. How you? I'm good, man. Uh, bro, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Just a brief synopsis, bro. Like you know, um, of course we talked prior, and um, the platform that I have here, bro. You know, I, I just want to have a platform where I can bring people currently playing, previously playing collegiate high school basketball players and also professional athletes on to tell their story and to tell their story their basketball story i should i keep saying i, I don't want to just say basketball because it's a sports show so their sports story without any type of backlash without any type of people like criticizing what they got to say at that particular time because a lot of times when people are getting interviewed it's some pushback right it's some pushback to the shit that they saying it's some pushback to Oh man, your stories ain't adding up. This ain't this and this and that. Nah, I want to give people their flowers. So I'm gonna let you go, bro. I'm gonna throw lives. Dunk that bitch, bro. This is that's you know, this I got is what you, I got you. <laughs> like, 
I want to, I want to, I want to do this, man, for for people, for us around here, bro. Because, you know, I, I oftentimes tell this story, man. Like growing up, you know, I graduated in '99 from high school, bro. So growing up, we didn't have this shit. We didn't have these no, type facts. of things for people to 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 be able to do that. Even people that are still currently playing basketball, you know, it's a lot of times where y'all want to get y'all shit out. Y'all want to get y'all stories right. out. So mm-hmm. that's why we here, bro. We here to celebrate you. We here to big you up, and we here to give you your flowers right now, bro. So, um, with that being said, what I want to do, what I always do before we get down to the to the nuts and bolts into the nitty and gritty, I always do a toast, right? Yeah. So for y'all that's out there right now, raise your glasses. Comment down below. Let me know what it is that you're sipping on right now. I got some 1800 and roses line. What you got, Wayne? So Don Julio, OJ. Okay, so we both tequila it and out. Okay, and then yeah. what we always toast to, bro, always is to life, health, wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Salute. Now we can get the show popping, bro. We can definitely get it popping now. So, as I previously mentioned, man, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to interview you. So I just want to start in the beginning, bro. Let's just go and we're going to work our way up to where we are right now today. All right. So, um, first of all, let me just let me just get this out, too. Where are you currently at right now? I'm in the, uh, I'm in the Netherlands. So uh, the actual city is I stay in Nijmegen, Netherlands, but the team is in Bimmo, Netherlands, which is like a 10, 15 minute drive. So, I mean, everybody would know Amsterdam. So, you know, I'm like 45 minutes from Amsterdam. OK, what's the time? What time is it there right now? Man, it's uh, it's 12, 18 right now. So we seven hours ahead from the from the crib. 12, 18 right now. It's, it's 5 p.m. here in the States. Central time and it's 12 8 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. My bad. Then. Yeah, 12 a.m. Yeah. Once again, man, and and that's just that that's I appreciate that for you staying up to actually do the interview. So that's definitely appreciated. Um, sure. But yeah, bro, let's just start, man. In the beginning, man. Um, before you got into basketball like heavy, right? Mm-hmm. First of all, what age? What age do you think you really got into basketball heavy? And like. Six or seven, mm-hmm. I had to say, I got I was I, I got thrown out there early, but not like on the AAU scene, but you know little leagues, you know PAL, uh, yeah. NCSL, you know them type hey, of leagues real, around real, the city. Real quick, uh, the, so for people that's not from the area, these acronyms: PAL is the Police Athletic League. What was the other one that you just said? I'm N- sorry. N- NCSL, I forgot what NCSL stand for. They still got some league like football around, but uh, I forgot what the full what the full name is for that one. Right. So PAL is yeah, we know PAL is Police Athletic League. I don't even know what NC. What was it? NC what? NCSL. NCSL. I'm not sure what that is either. So we just gonna we gonna let that one rock. But um, so before you got into basketball, though, were you or while you were even playing basketball at an early age, was there any other sports that you were interested in or that you played? Football was I mean, I played, you know, soccer, baseball and all that. But if you say like up to competitiveness, like really was trying to like go somewhere with it, I would say football. Mm-hmm. OK. And you played football the same in the same time frame that you. So, OK, let, let's do this real quick. When did you discover your love for basketball? And when you discovered your love for basketball, were you still trying to be competitive and playing football at the same time? Yeah, I, I first really found my love probably like third, fourth grade. And okay. I still was still doing football competitive because, you know, you know, they kind of translate, you know, toughness and giving that right. edge, you get that on the football field. And you know, like right. I went to I went to Brown Deer Middle School. So, you know, they they was more football oriented more than they was basketball. So a lot of my classmates was playing football. So in okay. older sit older cousins. So, you know, I was on that football wave more than basketball, actually. But, you know, oh, okay. I was like I probably said I was equally talented at both. OK, it's funny that you mentioned that because it kind of reminded me of what Allen Iverson said. Like Allen Iverson was like, I was, I was football heavy. I hated basketball because he thought it was soft. Right, and it was more football heavy. Okay, that's 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 crazy that you mentioned that. Um, so since you were in both, right, 
did you like at that particular time when you were playing football and basketball? First of all, what position did you play in football? I started off at receiver and safety. No, no, receiver and defensive end. You know, receiver. I I I love Randy Moore. Defensive end. So, you know, yeah, I was quick. On, I was quick off that end. Okay, okay, okay. And, and I was I was actually like pretty tall for my age too, though. So you know, mm -hmm. quicker and taller, you 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 getting there. You know, what I'm saying right. you get to the quarterback. So you know, I'm I'm trying to be the quick first one to the ball. But I end up my last like two years, I end up playing quarterback because I noticed like you know most in like middle school leagues they don't pass the ball. Everything mm -hmm. is just run, run, run. So I was like, I'm like, I'm going to go play quarterback. You know, I right. thought I was Vince Young and Mike Vick at the time. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I started playing quarterback. But, you know, I was fast, too. So most of the times I just QB scramble. Every every, every single time I just QB scramble. Right. I threw a few. I threw a few down there. I had a, I had a nice little arm on me. But we had we had we had a pretty good team, though. Like we barely lost in middle school. Oh, wow. OK. So at this point in time, when you were when you found out that you were this decent in football, too, was were you taking either sport over the other one or was it more so like both equal? No, nah, they, they they both was equal. Uh, cause I, I mean, like growing up, that's what most of my cousins, they played football. Right. So, you know, you going to go into grandma house. They ain't really trying to do no basketball. We go play football, you know. Madden, we playing all that type of stuff. So I was more in tune with football up until like I got hurt. So like eighth grade, that's when I really made a decision. And I feel like my decision made itself because I had an injury. I ended up having knee surgery. So I couldn't even play football eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah, I had knee surgery, man. What you what, did you tear you tore something or what? I ain't I ain't even tore none. I, I had this, I had a groin disease called uh oscondritis desiccans. So it's it's kind of like um on the patellar it's like the, it's like the jumpers need the patellar tendon, right. so you know I was um it was they say it was something I was born with but what it was so like in seventh grade when we was at Nashville I noticed my knee was always swelling up like in the morning time I barely would be able to walk and you mean real quick let me just for people that's that's listening you mean nationals for basketball right yeah nationals for basketball okay. yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So we, so we at nationals, and you know, I'm telling my pops like, and I think something really wrong with my knee because it's like I wake up in the morning, it's, it's super, it's super swole. You know, mm -hmm. I barely can walk. It takes like an hour just for me to get it warm, but I still was hooping, just you know, mm -hmm. doing what I'm doing. I still was playing the same, but I still was playing through the pain. So right. you know, I go to football practice. Nationals was in like end of July, early August, so they done already started football already. But, you know, right. I already made my name on the football team. So they kind of was like, okay, we know he also played basketball. Right. So grandfathered in. Got you. Yep. yep. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so when I got there, they they already rolling. You know, they they going through plays. And, and it's, a, it's a new coach and stuff like that. But it's like, man, my knee killing me. So I ended up telling moms and pops, like, I think something really going on with my knee. Like, because in mm -hmm. football, you know, it's it's really cutting in football more than it is yeah. basketball, you know, especially sure. the way that's I play. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play this year. So we ended up going to the doctor. You know, we had went to see, like, two different doctors, and I ended up seeing the Bucks doctor, Dr. Heinrich, because at first we wasn't really believing what they were saying because, you know, some doctors just trying to get a check. So, you at know, the, we ended up going to, At this point in time, um, are you going to orthos? Orthopedics? Yeah, I, I, yeah, okay. I was going to orthopedics, you know, because through okay. basketball, you know, I knew a lot. My dad knew a lot of people, so they was right. getting us in the right rooms with the right people. So, you know, I ended up getting with Dr. Heinrich when I was in eighth grade. That was the Bucks doctor at the time. Yep, so, you definitely. know, he he, so he we did the MRI, whatnot. You know, we found out. So, my whole eighth grade year, I couldn't even play basketball. So well, you didn't play at all. I ain't played all eighth grade year. And you know my, you know, so, you know, you know, I just know how, how parents is, you know, they not going to let you rush. I know them, how your you know. pops is, bro. I know how your pops is. is. Yeah, you know, <laughs> pops ain't going. So, you know, I right. sat out the whole, you know, I sat out the whole time. So, you know, I, I play, I ended up playing like, so I had the surgery like December. I ended up playing like in July, but you know, I always played up. So we can, you know, we can go back to that in a minute, but I always right. played a grade up basketball. Yeah, no, we're so gonna touch I on that because I like I like I like the brag in there real quick. So we're gonna we're gonna touch on yeah. that. I like the brag. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so when I was in eighth, so when I was in eighth, I was playing 15 U ninth grade. So you know, um my first tournament was like the NY to LA tournament. So you know, that was big back in, you know, when I was coming up, you know, that's in Milwaukee. And uh that was like my first tournament back. So I had to work my way. I I ain't play at all 
my my last year of middle Who school. Who you playing with? I we was playground. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So sure. we we, sure. we still so we was playground elite because you know it's playground elite playground mm-hmm. words. So we was we was playground elite at that time. So you know I I had to sit out that whole time. So you know at that age you kind of like man I, you know a lot of people were saying like why he having knee surgery? He thirteen years old and yeah think about it, bro. So thirteen this was. 2000 and what? It's like eight or eight, eight 2008. Right. So, knee surgeries at that time was a little bit different than what they are right now. It wasn't looked upon the same yeah, way that it's right, right exactly. now. Exactly. Like, they they, they was using a knife. It's straight knife. Yeah, bro. And then even at that point in time, if you had knee surgery, it was damn near a death ticket. Like to your playing yeah. career, like people wasn't like you could you could, you can lose. Uh, people who are looking at you as far as colleges and all type of shit if they find out that you have a knee surgery. Can you just real quick elaborate on what what is the definition of that uh, disease that it was? So it's basically like a growing disease. Like I wasn't growing like at a rapid rate, but it's also Mm -hmm. like, you know, at that age, you know, when you get the jumpers knee from jumping all the time playing outside. So it was just like wear and tear. But it was also something that I, I just specifically was born with. So, you know, mm-hmm. they went in and they put three dissolvable screws like on the right side of my knee, the left side, and then a little bit up, like upper, you know, above the kneecap. Okay. And the, the, the screws, they dissolved on their own, like mm-hmm. within time, you know what I'm saying? So it basically was just to keep stuff intact. So like what, the, so cart, the cartilage and everything, keep the cartilage intact. Because the cartilage, the cartilage was basically mm-hmm. like loose. And it gotcha. was like, if I would never had the surgery, it just was going to fall off. So I was gonna be playing bone on bone. Bone on bone. Yep. Yep. So by the Kinda time like I would have got like D Way. Yeah, exactly. Bone on bone. Okay. So that's what the so that's what the disease was. It was more so to well, I shouldn't say that it was more so, but it was just loose cartilage that could have eventually been been gone. Okay, cool. Exactly. Cool. That, Cause that was the first time. I mean, I've heard of like, you know, people playing without cartilage and it being bone on bone. I yeah. never knew what the actual term was was uh for it though. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is eighth grade. So, and of course, like I said, we're going to go backwards. I just wanted to to put the other football aspect and the basketball aspect. For sure. As to what, you know, when the, when the parallels happen. But um, what I want to ask you, though, is, so, because you just mentioned that you played up, right? Yeah. But when did you find, when did you, when did you know that, okay, this basketball shit I'm better than the average player in my age bracket at this point in time. When did that come up? When did that come about? I say like fifth by like fifth grade. Okay. It was so like let's start fifth grade. Then. Let's start from there then. Okay. See, because fifth grade, I mean, well, I mean, third grade, I kind of seen it because I was playing on the team with conscious shooters. But it's mm-hmm. before my pop, my pop still was doing DTA. So he had the high school kids. So, okay. you know, um, it wasn't really too many third grade teams. So my older cousin was playing on the team called the Wisconsin Shooters. So my mom was like, we, go, we he want to play, so we just go put him on the team. So, okay. you know, we playing in all, you know, Racine, Milwaukee, Kenosha. So I'm playing sixth grade. I'm third grade playing six. So oh, wow. I, I'm literally, I literally get in the game just to shoot threes. Like, <laughs> like if I get in the game, it's just like they in the zone. We want you to bust the zone open. Like kind of, you yeah. seen more than the game, little, oh, yeah. little dude that play with bra just, just shooting yeah. the threes. Yep, yep. Man, I, I literally had games where I had like four or five threes, and people like, man, he only nine years old. Like, You're talking about uh, Drew Joyce. Yeah, Drew Joyce. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm hitting, I'm hitting all these threes, and like at that time, it wasn't too much putting on the floor. If I put on the floor, it's a float, floater, float game, you know, and okay. it's just, it's just a three. So, you know, I'm playing against older kids. By the time, it's just it's local. You know, we playing kids teams in Milwaukee. We playing mm-hmm. teams and, and racing, and you know we not even playing like the top teams, like the Rebels and the Spartans and playgrounds. We just playing just these other knockoff, you know, from where they from, like racing, they right. little teams, like school teams. Right. So you know it kind of started then. then hey, man, you know, you ain't, worse. Say, you ain't gonna say knockoff when it come to racing, bro. That's where I'm from. You ain't gonna say knockoff. Hey. I, I'm just messing <laughs> with you, bro. I'm messing with you. I know what you meant. I know what you meant, though. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so we we playing we playing in them tournaments. Then you know, pop starting like okay, like you know, like like D D can go. Like a lot of people yeah. saying like I could go like that. So then that next year, 
when I was in fourth grade, we started, we went, we, we jumped playground warriors. Mm. So th- I was playing fifth grade. I was playing fifth grade then. So then that's when I really started seeing it. Like, so really it was fourth grade, but I was, I was a year younger, th- year younger than everybody. But, right, right. you know, I, I was seeing it early. Like, like a lot of people thought I was in that age group. Like when rankings was coming out, they was ranking me with, the older kids, cause they nobody oh, wow. knew. So they how wasn't old. even ranking you with your four, okay? Cause they didn't know how old you were. Okay, yeah. Keep yeah, going. they didn't know how old I was. So <laughs> yeah, keep going, bro. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. So you know, I seen it early. You know, we were still playing at local tournaments, but then you know, we, you know, that's when they start the little nationals. So we go on the nationals. And, you know, I first off, we won state. You know, we won state in, uh, in Wisconsin. We end up beating the Rebels. And, you know, I had a pretty good – I mean, I remember vividly we had a pretty good team, and I had a pretty good run at, up at State. So, mm-hmm. you know, then I'm like, okay, yeah. Was I'm that like, the Badger State games, uh, Dwayne? Yeah, it was in Madison, so it probably was. I think it was, it was the Badger it was, State it was like, game, yeah. Okay. It was like, it was like in Stoughton. It was like Stoughton, Wisconsin, something like that. Yeah, I think that might so, have been you know, Badger uh, State. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so that's when I really started seeing it. But then when we went uh, – Man, we went, we went, man, I'm telling you, so we went to Spice. Uh, when I was fourth grade playing fifth grade, we played against Indiana Elite. We okay. played, they had Yogi Ferrell. Uh, they had Gary Harris. He in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a kid, Devontae Smith-Rivera. He like Georgetown all, all-time leading scorer. RJ Hunter, he was a lottery pick. Trayvon pick. Blewett, he top mm-hmm. overseas. They had a stacked team where they mm-hmm. beat us by like 60 or 70. That's mm-hmm. when I was like, hold on, like it's it's some other kids out here, like yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. me. Yeah. You know, so like that oh, yeah, kind of early. course you're not even thinking about it because you was local at that point in time. Yeah, yeah okay. I only yeah. played local. Yeah. So like I right. mean, like even it's even the teams in Chicago, like it wasn't really too many kids, you know, that we were seeing personally get, you know, and that that for that when we played Indian Elite, that really opened my eyes up. But then it showed like how good I was. And I was like, you know what I'm saying, even though we lost by a lot. I was actually out there hooping with them. You know, I'm a whole year younger, so I'm like, I can only imagine if I went to play my age group, like mm-hmm. how it would be. Yeah. So, you know, I had early on, so, you know, we went to nationals, you know, we seen, you know, nationals, it's teams from all over. You know, you got teams, every, every, like each, matter of fact, it's two teams, two teams from each state, wherever the first place, second place, and I believe third place go to nationals. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, man, it's like three, 200, 100 teams, maybe. Yeah. So, you know, I had a pretty, pretty good, you know, turnaround in Nationals. And it was just like every year, I just was getting better and better. My confidence, my confidence was going up. And, you know, at, like in middle school, I just always ask my pops, like, why I'm playing up? Because, you know, I always wanted to play my age group. Yeah. Because my, was it, my age group. This. It's funny that you mentioned that. Was, did you want to play your age group because – your friends were in that age group or did you want to play your age group because you thought that, okay, I'm going to kill these dudes anyway. It was both. Cause I had, I mean, one of my best friends now was on the, on the older team that I played on, but then a team okay, under okay. me was my cousin. And then Got we had you. Deontay, we had Deontay Burden, Kavon Looney, Jarvis Garrett. Like we mm-hmm. all was on the same team. So you put that team together. We mm-hmm. number one team in the country. Right. My pops was like, man, I want you to play up. So, you know, I played up all throughout middle school. But, like, sometimes I would go down and play with them. Like, sixth grade, we played against Julius Randle, Texas mm-hmm. Titans. And they was telling me, like, yeah, we playing against Julius Randle. They brought me down to play with the uh, with the sixth grade team. And, you know, we had a battle. He was, like, the first sixth grade I seen. I was dunking like Brown. So, that's mm-hmm. when I was really like, hold on, bro. It's, it's really other kids out here, like yeah, – yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. that's like freaking natures and, you know, big. So, you know, mm-hmm. I got exposed. I got exposed to it early, but I mm-hmm. knew at an early age, like, you know, like d- basketball was really it. Because I had – basketball was more exposure to football. And, you know, Pops, he was on the Adidas circuit. You know, he coached some of the, the pre-flexure, all of them playing on the on the yeah. high scale. So, like, I that knew, like, okay, I, I got the – I, 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 got, I got the blueprint – you know what I'm saying? Like I know this hoop, this hoop stuff is where it's at. Right. So, so now we get to the 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 year of, you know, that eighth grade year when you had the surgery or whatever. This is where like we actually went back. So let's just stay here for a mm-hmm. second, right? So you end up having the surgery. Um. At that point in time, you didn't play your whole eighth grade year, correct? Yep. Okay. 
So did you know right away that, first of all, did you know right away that you weren't going to be able to play your whole eighth grade year? No, you said you played like towards the end of it though, right? Yeah, I play. I played towards the end when it got. It was like the summer, so you know. Well, uh, you know that's the. You know they. You could get evaluated by the college coaches with the right. freshmen. So you know that was like end of July. I played one tournament, two tournaments. That was it. Two tournaments that whole that whole year. That was it. Did it? Did it? Did the surgery? Did the surgery do anything to your confidence? Yeah, I, I would say like at first it, it kind of hurt my confidence as far as like me sitting out because at the time, you know, I'm ranked like in the country nationally, I'm ranked 12th. Coming Ooh. in eighth grade, I was 12th in the country. No, so then when they- You said you, was do, you did what now? You was what? I, <laughs> I was 12th in the country on Hoop Scoop. So, you know, Hoop Scoop is legit. That's a legit website. Everybody tunes, turn, turn, tuning in to uh, Hoop Scoop. So you know, I'm on who scoop or whatnot. What you say? So you were ranked 12th overall, not just in as the point guard, but overall. We're gonna drink yeah, to that, overall. bro. Yeah, we're gonna take a drink to that. Definitely take a drink to that. Mm-hmm. You see that? You come on baseline to goal line. I give you your flowers, man. Let's go. Keep going, yeah, man. Keep talking. Too. Keep talking. So you know, I was like, man, I, at that time, you know, all kids worried about rankings. You know, I'm like, man, my ranking, my ranking finna go down. They go forget about me. You know, I already. Oh, so you're listening. thinking about this consciously at in eighth grade. Yeah. You're thinking about it. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Yeah, because I'm like, man, I could, I, I couldn't even play. So it's like it, it was so frustrating watching everybody play, and it's like it's during prime, you know, school season too, though, because I played for my school team. You know, I was the star player at Brown Deer Middle School, so I couldn't play then. And then the AU, you know, some of the first tournaments like the tournament in Milwaukee, Spies. It's a bunch of tournaments that we was in that I couldn't even play, but I'm traveling like I'm sick, yeah. you know. And then also we had the Nike deal. We had we, we had we had the little, we had the Nike deal then too though. So no, you know, let's talk we about playing, that. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, so we so we playing on this. It's EYBL, but it it wasn't the format isn't the same as it is now. So like you literally gotcha. so fifteen you you play like pool play. So each mm -hmm. each 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 location, like we went to uh we went to Atlanta, uh we went to LA. Um I think it was like a it was like two more locations, but you know, I'm I'm going to all of them, but you know, I can't even play, but they know who I am. They like, oh yeah, he ain't playing. You know, I was one of the premier players for in the program. So, mm -hmm. you know, it hurts seeing like, you know, we play against the Harrison twins, they the number one. Point guard, shooting guard. So you know, I've been wanting to see them. Yeah, I, I got, I got to see them again. But it was like I wanted to see them when we was like in eighth grade. So it was a lot of players that we, I was seeing in eighth grade that I couldn't play against because I was hurt. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was, it was frustrating. And then I didn't know, like, you know, you, you hear at that age, you know, what I'm saying, you hear people talking, and I was like, I don't even know how, my, how I'm gonna come back from a knee injury. You know what I'm saying? I'm 13, 14, going through adversity already, dealing with, you know what I'm saying? You don't be having surgery at 13, that's 14 years old. Yeah, that's why I mentioned that before, bro. Like, you know, during that time frame, we 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 gotta think about it. Like, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, when you think about 2008, it doesn't seem that long ago. But technology was nowhere near where the hell it's at right bro, now. Facts. And People's recovery time, like just think about this to a lesser degree, and and then we'll get back onto this because I don't want to stay on this soapbox too long. But you know, you got people who are coming back from Achilles injuries, playing either the same or a little bit better than what they did before. Right. I e. Kevin Durant, people like that. But then before that, though, you know what I'm saying? Like an Achilles injury or even a knee injury. You know what? Damn the Achilles injury. We're just gonna talk about knee injuries, bro. Then was death. Tickets, bro. No, nah, like, yeah, you, was, you, you wasn't coming you back. Done. Yeah, you was especially at the age of thirteen. So, oh, thanks. You know, that's why I say all that to say, you know, the adversity that you went through that old, that young, did that prepare you for where you are now and for you know even your immediate future? And then no, we'll get back. To, yeah, we'll get back to. No, it, it, no, it most definitely did because it taught me at a young age, like you got to be patient. You know, so like, you know, I done had a lot of injuries throughout my career. I'm, we go touch on all of it, but mm -hmm. you know, that was at the beginning. So, you know, that was early. I had to think longevity. I ain't know what longevity, you know what I'm saying? I'm just used to hooping, hooping, hooping. I want to go right. to this park and hoop. I want to go play here. 
I could, yeah. you know, my pops ain't going for none of that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like all my homies going to play in this, I can't go play because he he's he, play he, warning he, and all of that. They wasn't doing none of the man, warnings and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the all the all the playing on the asphalt was done for once I had the, the knee. Once I had the knee, like, pop shut all that down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all that was out the window. And then even when I was, like, rehabbing, he barely was letting me even practice. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, I really had to sit down, you know, watch, watch my guys play, you know. And I felt like I, that's how I started learning, you know, the game on the, on the IQ aspect because it's like, when you actually sit down and watch the game, instead of always being out there in the motion, you see stuff differently. The, the, the right. pace of the game is totally different. So right. like when I came back, it was almost like second nature. Like I didn't lose a step because it was like this whole time I've been watching. I've been looking at this top player, this top player. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I took my time. I made sure I did my therapy the right way. You mm -hmm. know, I was doing everything I needed to do because I could have easily rushed back and you know, this part could have messed up my whole career. Like I probably wouldn't be where I'm at now if Pops didn't handle the situation how he handled it. So if you rush yourself back, yeah. So did you uh yeah, that's that's crazy that you mentioned that. Um so when you come when you came back, did you feel like you lost you lost any athleticism, any speed, anything like that? No, I was dunking that motherfucker when I came back. I was I was I had, In I had grade? Yeah, I had the big brace. Like you, you know, you know the ACL, the ACL yeah. brace is like this. But yeah, this the ones that, I, that the offensive linemen wear in football yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got you. But it's like, it, I'm sure if you ever know, you know, I always dunk with my left hand. Mm -hmm. So you know, this when I really start noticing, I'm like, damn, I'm jump, I'm jumping off the right leg. You know what I'm saying? That's not usually. That's oh, I'm right handed. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, right. I'm really ambidextrous. I'm left hand, right handed. Right. So it was like. You know, when I came back, I was just doing everything off the right leg. Like, I was dunking off the right leg, but, you know, I had this brace on, so, like, I would favor this leg, but, like, I still can see, like, okay, I, I still got my athleticism. Because the um, surgery was you know, on what, your, le your left leg? Yeah, the surgery was on my left okay. leg. Okay, okay. So, you know, I still, I still favored it a little bit, but, like, I really didn't feel like I lost a step. Like, I still was able to shoot it the way I was able to shoot it. And, you know, I just always been like, I wasn't the most skilled player. I just knew how to score. Like, that's, like, it's from an early age. Like, I just don't know how to describe it. Like, since ever since I've been playing basketball, I've always been just a scorer. Like, no matter how you need to get a bucket, I'm going to get a bucket. So, so the like, skill I, aspect, then, it came later? Like, I feel like I, I just got skilled. When I got out of college, honestly, like when I, my my fifth year yeah. going into AM, yeah. that's when I feel like I really started getting a skill because, like, okay. even then, like, I didn't have a crazy handle, nothing like that. I just knew how to get to my spots. I was athletic, acrobatic. I could spin, I could shoot, mm -hmm. I finished over the top of people. And then, you know, I just always played hard. Like, I, you know, I had that edge and that toughness to me. So, you know, when I came back, um, actually, that's when the college coaches could come. So that's when I started picking up interest. Like I had Memphis. Okay, we moving. Whoa, 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 whoa. We gonna get there. Ooh, we gonna get there. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, we gonna yeah. get there. Yeah, we, okay. we definitely gonna get there. Um, cause shit, you was about to go in, and I, I love it. I love the aspect. I love the energy. We definitely gonna get there. So let's just real quick because you said that you were playing for Brown Deer Middle School, right? Yeah. But you ultimately ended up going to Dominican for for high school. Yeah. How did that come about, and why did you choose Dominican over any of the Vincents and the um, the the Kings and, and yeah. all of that? Why did you choose Dominican? Well, when it came to the high school decision, and I really wanted to go to Tulsa East. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, they had Devin Harris, Jerry mm -hmm. Smith. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like Al Hansen, that's like a big brother to me because, you know, Pops right. kind of, you know, Pops molded Shout him. Out. Shout out Al. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm always going to the Tulsa East games and stuff like that under Haas. But then Haas ended up, I think it was either seventh or eighth grade year, Haas ended up retiring. So Pops was like, I don't know about Tulsa East. And then um, Menominee Falls was in the picture because me and JP Tokoto was teammates mm -hmm. in middle school. So he was like, we go pair y'all two up together because y'all two like the big, you know, big things out of middle school. 
So um, I had that, but then he JP ended up going to play with the other playground team. So that was out the picture of me going to Menominee Falls. So then okay. it was Dominican, Brown Deer. King was in the picture, but they wasn't in the picture. You know, that whole little situation with K. Lou. And then mm-hmm. the situation, they had a bunch of guards that in 2012 class, the year ahead of me. Like, we had dudes that put on our AU team that was already at King. Like, Give they had a name. bunch. Of, they had a Royal Edwards, uh, yep. Nick Stokes, Jahad yep. Jackson. Yep. And then they are then then they had like Devin Steele. I think D Steele was like a sophomore. Marcus Kirk. Marcus Kirk was nice in high school. Mm-hmm. He was like a junior or a senior. So they was loaded. So right. Pops was more on some. If you go to Dominican, Dominican had they had they had show they had Showtime mm-hmm. uh in the past. And they, then they had JR, then they had Kwame, then you know Coach, Coach Wallershine, like a legend coach or whatnot. Right. So uh Dominican was always in the picture because we going to see Kwame play on the older playground team. So we used to go right. watch their games. But I didn't want to go to Dominican because I was caught in the public school stuff. You know, Brown Deer was a public school. Dominican, you got to wear a uniform. It really wasn't no chicks there. Throw that okay. out there. I was okay. like, nah, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't really trying to go there like that. But Did you, you know, also think it, about this real quick? Let me ask you something. Did you also think about the competition ain't going to be as good at Dominican as it would be if I went to uh, MPS? See, I, I, that played a part in it, but the games at Dominican that I was seeing was at the beginning of the season. So they playing MPS, you know what I'm saying? And the they playing like, the non-conference the, yeah, schedule. Like they non- okay. non-conference was always crazy. So like, mm-hmm. I really ain't know too much about their conference up until like I actually got there. But like the crazy thing is, I ain't never really told nobody this, but you gotta take a test in Dominican. <laughs> Breaking news! Breaking news! Let's go. <laughs> hey, I failed. I failed the test on purpose. <laughs> I did not want to go to Dominican because I wanted to go to Brown. At, at this point, I just wanted to go to Brown Deer. But my cousin was finna transfer to Brown Deer. He was gonna go to Brown Deer. What's your I cousin? going. Uh, Deshaun Gross, and but then okay. also my uh my cousin Daryl Bowie. He was at Dominican. He was about to transfer. He let he left Dominican. And he was finna go to Brown Deer too. So I'm like, I kind of want to go to Brown Deer. But the thing with Brown Deer was uh I played summer league with them. They coach basically told me he was gonna put me on JV. Mm. And they was playing like I think they was playing like the flex, flex offense, like this weird offense that just wasn't me. So I'm like, ah yeah, Brown Deer. I was yeah. like, I'm just gonna have to go to Dominican. And it was like Waller Sean basically told me, like, I'm giving you the keys from day one. So it was like, all right, like I I can't, you know, I can't really turn that down. So wait a minute. So how how did you, how did you, how did you end up failing? And then what the hell happened? I I had to, I had to take, I had to take the, bro, this is how bad they wanted. They made me take the test again. So it was like the second. that don't happen, right? Yeah, normally you don't, you, it's, it's just one time and it's over right. with. They're like, we, you can take the test again. So I took the test and I just took it for real because at this point I was kind of seeing like Brown Deer kind of out the picture because they they not really basketball oriented. You know, I started seeing the bigger picture mm-hmm. and we had a better, and we also had a better team at, at, you know, at Dominican, but most of my family and cousins was all transferring to Brown Deer. So I was kind of like, I want to play with my cousins. Right, so, right, right. So I ended up, Passing the test, I ended up going to Dominican, and from like you know from the go, I was a starting point guard as a freshman. Mm-hmm. So you know that was a you know that's another moment going through adversity. Like my first game, I had zero points. Like I was what like, is, what, what year is this? Um, and and this I, was, of course, this was this was this was oh nine oh nine right right. This this oh so, nine oh ten. So your first game at Dominican, you don't score at all, but other than scoring. How do you feel you played? And I had like four or five assists. Okay. You know, other, other than that, I was solid. You know, it wasn't like, oh, he not ready to play, but it was more like, you know, you just didn't hit shots. I was nervous. And we played, we played, um, <clears throat> we played at Nicolay. So, you know, everybody, everybody coming to see, because I was the number one freshman in, in the state at the time. So it's like, okay, let's go see what he about. Right. So you know the first game, you know you got them jitters, and I think we, yeah. I think we might have played. I think we played like Catholic Memorial. You know they always had solid teams. What was Older. the game at Nicolay? It was the NY to LA tournament. Got you. 
Got you. It was NY the LA tournament. So, you know, my first game I had zero. And I just remember that night, I'm like, man, am I am I really ready for this? You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yeah, but so yeah, the yeah. next so, so the next game we played Franklin. I ran off for twenty five, so mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah, okay." Yeah, now, this, I got my groove back. I got my shit yeah, back. Yeah, like yeah. this, like like I, I, I'm ready for this. And then you know, Wallershawn threw me on a high seat early. Like the third game, we played King. King got big Silas Mills. Okay. Uh, Marcus Kirk was a was a top player in the state point guard. Like King was loaded. You know what I'm saying? From a from a a to z. Who was on your team at this time? Uh, we had Mikael Luter. He was a senior. He was a, a a good high school top player. You know, he played with DTA. We had mm-hmm. Jamal Taylor. He was a mm-hmm. he was a sophomore. sophomore he was yeah. highly he, he he was highly touted. We right. had uh, Breon Jordan. Breon was a sophomore. Okay. He he was yep. good. And outside of that, uh, then we had Iman Johnson. He played with us at playground. He played right. uh, at St. Leo's. Went on to play, mm-hmm. but. We had like a pretty decent team, but you know, Dominican, outside of them kids that you get from the inner city, it's just a bunch of kids that, you know, like the Catholic school kids, you know what I'm saying? So they solid, but they not really used to, you know, King basically had a whole AAU team. Right. So we ended up, we ended up beating King at South Division. And that was like my coming out party for real. Cause you Mm -hmm. know, everybody was like, yeah, little D don't want to play in the city. He ain't tough enough to play in the city, you that's, know. And that's why I asked you about going to Dominican because that's yeah. the stigma when you and when people from that that that's from the inner city of Milwaukee or even here, anywhere, it don't matter. From the inner city of wherever you're from, you end up going to a private school. It's because okay, it's easier. You can't stand what you can't deal with the toughness. You don't want to have to deal with these guards on a consistent basis. Please kill that that myth for me, bro. Kill that myth. Man, and it was it was over with for that one because I knew like man, my uncle was on me. He said when you see King bust they ass, and yeah. I knew like well, I knew all the guards there. You know they had the older guards, and I knew they was a defensive savvy team. You know they picking up ninety four. Ninety four. I was yep. the first the first play of the game. I know I just went coast to coast. I know I had they was like running and jumping too. I beat the mm-hmm. whole press. Went down, spin move, dropped it off to our uh, Iman. He dunked it on Silas, first play of the game. Mm-hmm. That's all I needed right there. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Confidence here now. Like now. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. That game, I, I think I finished with like 12 points, but you know, King is uh, such a good defensive team. It was a low-scoring game. The, the game was like in the 40s or the 50s. We ended up winning right. the game. But like, you know, at the same time, I'm still wearing a knee brace. So, you know, I can't really move oh, how, yeah, how, how yeah, I want to yeah. move. And – I like you know I told you I was dunking the eighth grade, but you know my my freshman year I was still having knee issues. Like my knee would be swelling up for no reason. Uh, it was mm-hmm. certain games that I would miss just because my knee was bothering me. So I wasn't my athletic self. So hey, it was you, just like, were you still six two? Were you six two at this time, or were you still growing? No, nah, I was like I was like six foot my freshman year. Okay, okay. I was like I was like six foot my freshman year. So like I really. I was above the rim player, but it was like a lot of layup, reverse, hitting yeah. threes. So I had a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my freshman year, I had a solid freshman. It was up and down due to injuries. And, you know, just being a freshman and it's like I'm – he put me on the hot seat. Like, we playing teams from Minnesota. We playing all the top teams from the city. So, you know, that got that, – that really, like, got me ready. So, like, when sophomore year came, you know, I got out that knee brace. That's when I really start the athleticism. Okay, we go, we go, <laughs> we go get to it. Go ahead. Yeah, because I wanna, I wanna just have some follow up questions to your freshman season. Um, but I, bro, I love you. Yeah, look, I could. The funny thing is, hey, I ain't I gotta say shit. I'm gonna let you. Yeah, I can, I can yeah, tell because I, I can just let you go. I can let you go. Um, your freshman year ends. You play pretty well. Your freshman year played pretty well. Yeah. Did you? Were you starting? At that point in time, were you getting interest from anybody? Yeah, so coming into high school, I already had interest because I was playing up in AU. Right. So, you know, um, I had Memphis, Iowa, Marquette, Wisconsin, basically all Big Ten, Big East. The uh, only reason I had Memphis was because uh, Pashner was there and Julian Swartz, he's from Milwaukee. Right. So, you know, he kind of was like, it's this young kid there, like, go check him out. 
So, you know, they checked me out early. You know, Memphis was my Oh, yeah, Cal Perry was gone already, and, and Passionate yeah. was there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. We're going to get back to the Memphis stuff, though, because that was my dream school. So, you know, they seen me in eighth grade, and they was like, okay, yeah. We, they had me yeah, on the okay, radar. Yeah, we, yeah, we'll definitely get there, for sure. So so my freshman year, Indiana was coming to um, games, because, you know, Cream just had left Marquette. Yep. So he, like, Cream on the low, basically offered me at Marquette, I, like, you know, like a it was a play offer, but it's dead. He did serious. Like when you get to this age, you know, you got you got the offer on the table, but he left to go to Indiana. So you right. know, I basically had the Indiana offer, Indiana and Marquette. Uh I had Indiana State. I think Indiana State might have had a, a Milwaukee coach, and he just threw that out there. And um, I had like Virginia Tech, and then I had Tennessee because of Bruce Pearl. And you know, we had ties with uh, Bruce yep. Pearl and them. Yep. So, you know, them Bruce really. And, yep. Yep. So, you know, they was coming to see me freshman year. So, you know, I was really had all the Midwest schools, and I just had Memphis and Tennessee was the only ones outside of the Midwest that I really had. So, but my name was for sure like on the radar, you know, of colleges. Got you. So let me let me just put this out there too, because what is the official time frame that a college player can get an official offer? And I think when we was coming up, I know the like answer. Had, but I just I, I just want to you know what I'm saying like once again I, I just think it, I, I think it was freshman year because it was dudes. Matter of fact, it was dudes like in seventh grade committed to Kentucky. When we was coming up in middle school, and that's when they put in the rule, like, nah, kids can't do that no more. So that's why they made it where college coaches couldn't even have contact with you until your freshman year. And if the contact was real limited, like it was certain parameters that they, they had. I thought that they couldn't offer you until your sophomore year. Nah, it was it was sophomore year because freshman year it was just strictly interest. I remember right. sophomore year when that when that deadline came. I remember that day. I had like all these coaches was calling left and right, back to back to back. Oh yeah, we just calling to say we got an offer on the table. So yeah, it was so sophomore year because freshman year they just sent a lot of you know it was so funny they just sent the questionnaires. You mm -hmm. know, like everybody was your homeboys be like, I just got a questionnaire from UCLA and USC yeah. and all these schools just showing interest. So y'all in high I school still, preparing notes and shit, like bro. I just got this. Notes. What you got? Right. It is crazy. My mama, my mama still got all the letters. I had took a picture. I probably had like three hundred letters, but it was like, you know, Michigan State sending me stuff with my face on it, like Michigan State, Iowa, Iowa State, like big time schools. I'm like, damn, like, okay. And that's when I was like, yeah, this shit real. Like, I, this is I'm the, a, this is your this is your what what year was this? This is my freshman year. Your freshman year. Okay, so this is still your so freshman year. So these just that they showing this just interest. So you know, you know how the interest go, you know. Yeah, for sure. They 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 heard about you. And, you know, we had a I had like Tom Cream popped into real games, Passioner came to Milwaukee, uh Buzz and it was in the backyard, and uh Bo Ryan, uh, you know, they they popped in, they came to see games like that. You know, BP didn't come up to Milwaukee, but he was keeping tabs of what was going on with me up here. Oh, Bruce Pearl, right? So, yeah, Bruce Pearl, okay. yeah. Yep. So, you know, that was all just interest. So I, the offers didn't come to sophomore year because that, that was the NCAA, the, the ruling for that. So going, to, so going into that summer of your freshman year, now you you buzzing. You, you getting all this interest and shit from all these different schools. Twofold question. Confidence-wise, what did that do? And what did you do to lock in that summer um, to say, okay, look, this shit is real. My sophomore year, I got to take this shit to another level. So what was your work ethic and what did you do that that summer of your freshman season? And what did the what did it do to your confidence level that you're getting all of these damn offers or interest, not offers, but interest from all these yeah. different schools? Yeah, my my comp my confidence level was through the roof just off the fact that, you know, we had a good year. We ended up losing the St. Cats and they had Steve McWhorter. He went to Indiana State. So right. it was like, you know, I'm going head to head with him and I'm only 14, 15 years old. So it's like I know sky's the limit for me. And then mm -hmm. also I knew that my knee was actually 100% because my freshman year, I was only like 80, 85%. And I'm when did you find like, out that your knee was 100% though? Man, once AAU season started and like I took, I took, I took a little break. I got to mm -hmm. chill. You know, I wasn't always practicing. Pop shut, shut it down for a few weeks. 
But then as soon as we get back to, when we got to AAU, you know, that's when I really started showing my athleticism. I was dunking. The doctor said I could just wear a knee sleeve. So it wasn't a brace. I was limiting my cuts and my jumping. So, you know, I was feeling free. And then, you know, that's then that's when I really hit the growth spurt. Then I was like six. I came out sophomore year. I was like six, two. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm like, six, I'm like six, one, six, two. You know, I'm, I'm starting to stretch out, gain some weight. Mm-hmm. So that sophomore year, that's when I really, you know, I was doing CrossFit training with, mm-hmm. uh, with, with this dude named Mike. You know, my pops had found him who was doing a cross, CrossFit training. And, you know, and one thing I always tell people, like, when I was in high school, like, you know, like, nowadays, like, people got soup, gym access. You know, yeah. access, like, at Dominican, like, we got one gym. And you sharing mm-hmm. that gym with all these other teams. I ain't no getting no extra shots up at the practice or mm-hmm. coming in in the offseason again shots up. So, like, I just hooped. That's that was my that was me working on my game, going to play five on five. Or oh, we mm-hmm. hooping here. Let me come near and hoop. So that's where I got my confidence back was going to these open gyms just around the city, going to hoop, AAU practice. You know, AAU just really got, got my swag back and got my confidence going through the roof. And right. I, you know, I was already playing up and I already had my name on the air you seen like people knew when who you, I you was. Still to play, you were still continuing to play up when you was a freshman that you were playing sophomore and yeah and- I play I play up until I couldn't no more. So like right. and you I, I always I always play always play the year up. Gotcha. So you know really it was just I mean I just started my I was growing into my body. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was really developing so it wasn't my mindset was really like just kill. Just show right. people, cause you know, people still was doubting me. You know what I'm saying? Like people was still bringing up the knee. I'm like, bro, I just here, showed you y'all, like, doubters. yeah, you gonna have doubters here. Yeah, and then, and then with me, what always was like the extra chip on my shoulder was like people like, oh, his daddy coaching, his daddy getting him this offer, his daddy right. getting. I'm like, bro, it like, I put the work in. You know what I'm saying? Like my my pops can't play for me. So exactly. it was like I always had that in the back of my head. Like he's always telling me like what people were saying, my uncle telling me, you know. So I always kept, you know, I always had that tunnel vision. And like every time, especially when we played other city teams in AAU, like I used to always try to destroy them because mm-hmm. it was personal because they always was the ones talking the most. Like his knee, his this daddy doing this or he can't dribble. He can't do this. But it's like I'm still getting oh, thirty. So it, was more so, it was more so coming from the from not people in Milwaukee, but other teams, other cities, and shit that was saying this stuff. Yeah, well, mainly it was it was Milwaukee because you know Milwaukee. Like, I mean, we could we could put it out there. Milwaukee, a bunch of crab in the buckets. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. especially back then, if you don't play with they, if you don't get down with them, they go. You ain't you ain't really that good. As opposed you know? to coming in, and yeah, it's yeah. I got what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You know what I'm yep. saying? So like that's that's always been the motive. The, the like the you know what I'm saying? that's how it's always been in the city. You know what I'm saying? So like I will hear the hate. So like that just always just fueled me like to go. So like anytime we play DTA, the Rebels, the Spartans, whoever team it was from Milwaukee, like I was trying to kill them. I was trying to dominate them just to let them know like I'm really real. Like it ain't. Yeah. My pop's not playing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm right. the one that's playing. So we go, so we now we into your sophomore season. Sophomore season, you got all the confidence in the world. You're getting all this interest. You're getting everything, right? So how did you play your sophomore season? And give me a, a couple of people that you played with your sophomore season. Uh we we talking about so Ed, you were the, are we going right to the high school scene? So the high school sophomore. What you want to do? Uh, we we can start. We can start with the AAU. So so the AAU, man. We was we played against like Mark Marcus Page. Basically, mm-hmm. man, we was playing Mar- Marcus Page. I'm trying to think who was 20, 2012 class. Uh, man, well, well you yeah, know, we, we just we had we had the NY to LA tournament here in Milwaukee. That's right. where Tony O'Carroll used to always had that. So you know, all all the teams from all over coming to Milwaukee. So, you know, we ended up, I don't, I don't think we won that tournament, but I was averaging like 25 okay. the, whole t- the, whole, the whole tournament. So, you know, like the whole AAU year, I'm dominating, playing up. Like we going to Minnesota, we playing against um, Howard Pulley. They a powerhouse Nike team. And then we still, we, we, we going to the Nike tournaments. And at the Nike tournaments, I'm killing. 
I'm mm-hmm. doing my thing at the 90, 90 turn. We playing against Nerlens Noel with B A B C. Yeah. Uh, I got we, I got it pulled up now for the uh, for that class. I got I got the names okay. pulled up for the class. So we got Nerlens Noel was one. Shabazz Muhammad, Isaiah Austin, um, mm-hmm. Kyle Anderson, Steve Adams, Stephen Adams, Anthony yep. Bennett, uh, Grant Jarrett, Marcus Smart, Gary Harris, Rasheen Sudo. Sudo- Sorry about that. A little bit of technical difficulties, but we left off uh, with you playing that summer, right? Your freshman year, going into yeah. And we, we was looking up and we was looking at the uh, the players and shit, right? So we had real quick. Let's go back real quick. The the league that you played for, you actually found it out. The acronym for yeah, it. yeah. So uh, for the NCSL, it was uh, man, what. Did, I was just on Facebook and I seen it. It was like it was neighborhood. Um, man, I can't remember. I forgot that fast. Wasn't it neighborhood children something? Ne- neighborhood children sports league. There you go. See, we here to help every each other out, bro. I got you, man. I got you. So let's <laughs> Team get back to that. So, exactly, exactly. So let's get back to um. So that year. The players that we was talking about that summer, do you want to just do with the do with the point guards that you had to go up against? Do you want to just name some names? Yeah, we really can just uh, we could just do the ninety names because, uh, like I was so, saying before, we we was on a Nike scene, so you know we strictly was only playing against kids that was they AAU team they sponsored by Nike. Nike. So that's mm-hmm. that was like the beginning of the whole EYBL deal. So. Uh, Mac Irvin had Nike deal, Mean Streets, like basically a lot of the teams that still got them now. But to think back on like some of the top players then that I know that we had played against, I say like Ty Jones, he was younger than me, but he was playing up also. I ran mm-hmm. into him and that was like a big time matchup because me and him was like the two best like guards out the Midwest. So, you know, that was a, that was a, a cracking matchup I had with him. And he was in eighth grade at the time and I was in ninth. But we was mm. both playing with we both was playing six teams though. Mm. So uh that was that was like part of RGB. That was probably like yeah, that was probably like the best, the best matchup that I had. The 2012 guards nationally, like I don't think they class was as strong as far as like point guards and stuff like that, especially on the Nike uh, so scene. Had, so yeah, it was like Marcus Smart. Um yeah. and if you want to say that he was a point, he played the two. And he was a late bloomer. I played against him in middle school. He really didn't get good until like his 16, 17 year. Like that year, he was still uh, just a defender. He wasn't really Marcus Smart type. Rasheed Suleiman? He was tough. We that now we played against him. He was on the uh, Houston Hoops. They had him, LJ Rose. He was a top player. They had J. Michael Reese. He was like a middle school phenom. We played against them. They was they popped us by like thirty. They they had too much for us. You know, we was just really a team out of Milwaukee at that time. You know, JP Togato was the number one player in, in our class. I mean, what twenty twelve class? He played with another team. Uh, we had a Royal Edwards that went to Rufus King. He was mm-hmm. a top player nationally. Uh, we had Otis Pertle that played at Tech. Uh, he was like an undersized four man, but. I, I was really like me and Aurel was the only two dudes who was really ranked on those teams mm, until okay. we got until, until we got to our last day last year in you. And that's when we got some bigger and better pieces to come with us. But at that time, we still just had like a bunch of local talent. But, we you know, we still had that dog in that fight where we was getting out there with teams like that. But also yeah. after the freshman year, I went to the Nike Jamboree camp. Uh, that's for like basically all the top Nike kids, but even. You know, some of the kids I can name, Zach Levine, uh, Wayne Selden. He was MVP, MVP of it. Uh, if, if you pull if you pull up my class, I can name them dudes off. Andrew Harrison, Aaron Harrison, Casey Hill, uh, Nate, Wiggins. Nate Britt, Andrew Wiggins. Uh, matter of fact, Andrew, Andrew Wiggins, he wasn't even, they didn't even know about him then yet. So he wasn't there. But Jabari Parker, yep. Jabari Parker, Julius Randle. Uh, Johnson. T- uh, yep, he was at Nike camp. Uh, Joel and B. Yeah, we, we ain't know about him yet either. He was a late, he was a late one. 
Uh, the Harrison twins. We we mentioned the Harrison the Harris, twins. The, yeah, the Harrison twins. So that was like the top dudes that was at the camp. You know, I had a pretty good showing at that camp, but that's when I first learned about the politics. Mm. You know, of the whole of the whole AAU, the shoe market. You know, on my team, I had Wayne Selden. At the time, Wayne Selden was in eighth grade, but he was like they were saying he the next Bron. You know, so like a lot of the writers, he taking all the shots. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, when you go to camps, camps is every man for itself. But at the same time, I've always been a team player. Like, I played, I played the game the right way. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really finna go one-on-one too much. So, you know, he already had that. His his camp was already telling him, like, you, you go out there, you shoot every single time. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of dudes was on at these camps. So, you know, it's really just every man for himself at them camps. So, you know, I fit in. You know, I had my my times where I go off, but you know, at those camps, it was so hard to really stand out unless you was just really a, you know, a crazy one-on-one player or you dunking or you bigger than a lot of people. But, you know, that was a good experience going to those, to that camp. And that also helped my confidence going into my leading into my sophomore year of high school. Cause then I really got to see all the kids that was my age finally and, you know, I seen where I was ranked against them. So, you know, at that time, I'm top 40 in the country. Um, You know, I still was, like, I number really, one. I mean, just want to give them a brief synopsis real quick of the people that were in your that was in your class real quick. So, I'm going to just go okay. over, like, you know, so we got Wiggins, Parker, and you said Wiggins was a late boomer. We talked about mm-hmm. uh, Julius Randle. Julius Randle. Aaron Gordon. Yeah, he was on the Nike scene, Aaron Gordon. James Young. He was on the Nike scene from Detroit. Yeah, Chris Walker, uh, Noah Vonley. He was Noah Vonley. I think they was on the Adidas scene. Austin Nichols, he was on the Nike scene. Bobby Portis, Nike scene. Rasheed Jordan, he was like Reebok or some. Nigel William Gloss, Nike scene was another kid. Tyler Ennis, Nike. Rondé, Nike. Jabari Bird, Nike. So yeah, it was a it was a it was a bunch of kids. Uh, Anthony and- Cat Barber. Bro, so crazy because I ain't even really scratched the surface yet. Look, Derek Walton. Yep. Yep. Karan Iverson. Allen That's Iverson. Allen Cutler. Iverson. Yep. Yep. He was tough. He was nice in high school. He was a Nike kid too. Luke Fisher. Yeah, big Luke. Mm-hmm. Matt Jones, Nick King, mm-hmm. Deontay Burton. Deontay. And this was this was our senior year rankings right here. So this was right. we was coming into college right here. Yeah, Simi Ojale. You, mm-hmm. I think, what was you like fifty? What two or something like that? Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Yep, there you yeah. right there. Yep, Zach Levine. Matt Thomas. Yep. I just want to see if, like, who you were, Kendrick Nunn. You was ranked above Kendrick Nunn, huh? Yep. Let me see, VJ Beecham. I heard a lot about him, bro. Yeah, he was tough. He was tough in high school and college. He was, you know, he was smooth, like he scored. Jordan, Jordan Bill was Bill. tough. Yeah. Yeah, I gave him I gave him 40. Monte Moore and I gave him 40. Yeah, Monte. Monte always was tough. I played against Monte a lot. You know, that's Midwest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your your class was actually tough. When you when you go back and look at this stuff, man, like in in the in the, in the when you when you're looking at it like in real time, it don't necessarily look tough. But then when you go back after it's been years, right. Now you and you see where the they league. playing that now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So let's get into your um your sophomore season real and you know I wanna really get to I wanna kind of speed well I don't necessarily want to say speed pass, but I wanna get to the, the, the national I mean to the uh championships that you had in high school too. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so, yeah. I um, mean sophomore sophomore year was you know, that just was the coming out party. We can just say that. Like, you know, I was my all the way healthy, you know. I yep. was showing everything I can do. Um, the offers was pouring in left and right: Marquette, Indiana, uh, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, uh, Michigan, Michigan State. Like all those teams was coming they in. Offer these not they not, they not interested anymore. You get yeah. the offer. Keep yeah, going. These, these, yeah, these, I'm like these I'm like Kelly right now. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So so sophomore, you know, I just was having a ball at this point, you know. I knew who I was. I was, you know what I'm saying? I knew the player that I was. Uh, we ended up losing at Saint. And we, yeah, we lost the, we, yeah, we lost the Saint Cats again. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we lost to them to, to gain to go up state. So how it worked with our division was whoever win between us and St. Casco win state. Right. So it would that really was a state championship game. We played them at Marquette. Um, I know that game I had like 23 or 25, but then they had Jordan Faust. And this crazy. Yep, yep. We in this how this how we got him on playground. I'm like, bro. The first time we played them, they played a one three one zone. You know, foul six five long on the top of the zone. The second time we play them, they playing them at point guard. We like, huh? He's six five six six, diamond mm-hmm. it, posting up, lay, finish. Mm-hmm. So you know, he 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 had like thirty, yeah, like thirty five on us. They end up going to stay, but then we end up getting him to come play with us for playground. Mm-hmm. So you know, me me and him built that. You know, we built that yeah. foundation, built that relationship. Yeah. So you know. Uh, and then same thing with AAU, you know, it just continued to AAU the sophomore year. I was playing 17s now on the EYBL. So we this when Andrew Wiggins and them was coming to play. Like you got the Canada teams and Nike, right. Anthony Bennett. Yep. So, you know, uh, we didn't do that good in the EYBL circuit. You know, we didn't, we just didn't have, you know, Milwaukee, we don't have the big men. We don't have the height. You know, a lot of these teams had had the height. So, you know, we struggled, but, you know, I had good games, good showings. You know, I had more offers coming. So, you know, and then I got invited to uh, – no, that was that was the junior year. So, we can wait till we go to junior year. So, so okay. then really sophomore year at AAU was the same. You know, it was good. You know, I was killing. Bucky's as usual. So, then junior year come. <laughs> buckets as usual. No, nah, buck, buckets as usual. Buckets as usual. Let's go. Hey, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So you know, no junior. This when uh Diamond Diamond Stone comes to Dominican. Yes, sir. So, you know, Diamond, the number one freshman in the country. So this bring even more hype for me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like because a lot of people you know, are there to see Diamond, but th- but then they getting a glimpse of you. Yeah, just off they, of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like I was getting, I was getting looks in schools off Diamond. Like I was like Diamond bringing in everybody in. But you know that during the year, our team was so stacked at Dominican. You know, it's me, Diamond, Jamal Taylor, Breon mm-hmm. Jordan. That that was our, you know, our four, our big four right there. Right. And, you know, we had a we had a good good role players. You know, six eight, six six, six five. So we were mm-hmm. solid. So you know, we ended up winning state. We beat Cuba City. To uh to win win the state championship. You got then, your rings with you or are they back at home? No, I got I got them back at the crib. They back okay, in the states. Okay, okay I okay. got them back in the states. But yeah, I got I got my. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I got my first ring my junior year. So you know, I was like freshman year we was close. Sophomore year we took another step. We kept losing the same cast. We finally got over the bone. We add diamond. You know, he's six ten. Like. Mm-hmm. Not you ain't stopping. Who did y'all play to go upstate? St. Cass. Yep. Again. Yep. I, yeah. yeah. We, right, right, right. And we and we popped. We popped them. We was it, it was too. It was too much for them with dealing with mm-hmm. Diamond. Then we got the our guard trio between me, Breon, and Jamal. It was mm-hmm. tough to really beat us. And then we still had Iman too. Yeah. So you know that really made us like when our Iman was gone. Matter of fact, but it still just made us. We had an actual. Oh yeah, he left. He left your sophomore year. That's right. Yep. 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 Because yep. he was a yep. senior. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we end up playing Cuba City. You know, Cuba the City, a historic team in the WIA state tournament. They, uh, man, what what is his name? The they coach uh, Jerry Jerry something. I can't even think of his name, but yeah. like he like the most winning winning this coach Jerry Pettigrew something like that. Like most mm-hmm. winners coach. So, you know, the refs on their side, I go up there trying to do Euro steps, they call spin travel. moves. No, they, they called us for eight travels on me. I had wow. eight turnovers in the first half, all off me trying to Euro step through the zone, doing spin moves, pro hops. Like they ain't never seen it before at that speed. So I'm like, bro, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do back in the city. But then I had coach, to make that coach, adjustment. Coach Gary Pettigrew. Pettigrew. Yup, that's it. Yup. Okay. He okay. le- most legendary coach. You know, they had a solid team. So, you know, mm-hmm. I had to make those adjustments early of, uh, like, adjusting to how the rest was, you know, refing the game. Because you know how it go upstate. You know, when, Yo. when city teams and city players go upstate, bro, they so different, tweak, bro. they got to tweak their game a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. no refs ain't really seen that type of athleticism. Yeah, you get refs from, like, the up the UP up there, way, like, Madison, mm-hmm. like, Eau Claire, lacrosse, yeah. all that type of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely. So, 
man, we, we ended up winning. Uh, I don't know how much we won by, but it was a lot. You know, I, I had a good game. Mm -hmm. I think Diamond had like a quadruple double. <laughs> Diamond had Diamond had like 16, 10 assists, 10 blocks, 12 rebounds, something crazy. We we ran right. them boys out to gym, but and he is he a freshman you know, right now. Yeah, he just yeah, a freshman. yeah, he was yeah, a freshman. So yeah. like so so kind of to rewind back, you know, this one I was I was like hot on the on the college you know, college agendas. So, okay. you know, um, just to go back a few more months, I, I took a, uh, I took an unofficial to Memphis. I took an unofficial to Iowa. Iowa. And I think that, I think, yeah, at that, they had Fran, Fran McCaffrey, uh, that was their head yeah. coach. And, you yeah, know, yeah, they yeah. was, they was trying to get like guards like me at Iowa to mix in with them shooters, you know, mm -hmm. athletic guards that can really get to the paint and create for them shooters. So, you know, I took the visit there or whatnot. It was cool. I really, I ain't going to Iowa. Um, <laughs> the crazy thing is Wisconsin never offered me. Um, I don't think, you know what? I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't think your style would have fit Wisconsin. Not, yeah. with the, not with the swing offense at that time. But it was crazy. So so before Diamond came, my freshman, sophomore year, they was on me heavy. And it was between me and Bronson Kenny because me and him was a, it was like a, you know, some dudes think he better than me and right. other people think I'm better than him. Right. So, you know, it came down to us and two. And he ended he up played. going. Bronson ended up going, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, he played for Playground Warriors. So Playground right. Warriors, Sam Decker, all yep. them used to always Richie, basically Richie Davis, all his players always went to Wisconsin. Gotcha. So, you know, Wisconsin, but you know, they had Devin, Boue, you know, they mm -hmm. still had ties to the city, the Landry, Ray mm -hmm. Nixon, all them. So, you know, they still was trying to recruit in Milwaukee and whatnot. But I remember I went to the this was uh freshman, go back to freshman year. I went to the little camp, you know, they used to have like the Wisconsin elite camps. You know, I killed the camp. And they kept saying they was going to offer me. The only reason I went to the camp is because they said they was going to offer me. But they oh, set it up, wow. basically. They put me on a trash team. Like, my team was terrible. It was like me and this kid named J.J. Panoski. I think he was from, like, Walkershaw. He was nice. Mm -hmm. And then they stacked Bronson, Sam Decker. They put all the Playground Warriors kids on the same team. On the same team. Because they probably already and, knew that they was coming there. And Decker committed to Wisconsin – Soon as he got offered, so like you know what I'm saying, like gotcha. they offered, they didn't even gotcha. offer Bronson, but they offered that. So like they kept telling me, like yeah, they go offer, you know. Then I took another unofficial there to go to the football game when they play Ohio State, and mm -hmm. that's when they told me there was an offer me again. So you know, I told pops like, man, call, you know, they had um, what's his name, Howard Moore. I think that was assistant coach at was at Wisconsin okay. at the time. And I was like, man, just tell them like we ain't got to do this no more. You know what I'm saying, like. I, wow. At this point, I feel I feel disrespected because it's like y'all ain't offering this, me. This, or is your, this is your junior year. Uh, this was sophomore. This was sophomore year. Okay, got you, got you. Because this one everybody could offer. Because Marquette, gotcha. they called me the Marquette called me the first day was like off on the table. Tennessee, mm. uh, Memphis, all these other schools called, but Wisconsin, like they was just playing this game. Like, yeah, like what y'all yeah. what y'all waiting for to pull the trigger? So, but I knew I wasn't. Did you did you want it? Did you you feel like you? I, I feel like you felt slighted. Did you want to go to Wisconsin? I had love for them because of Devin. Growing up, Devin was one of my favorite players. That's so, a lot you know, of people I had, say that around your age. A lot of people say that. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, like DJ Devin was, he was the one to look up to. So you know, and you know, it's they college atmosphere was different from Marquette. No, you know, for it's sure. real. It's, it's real college. Crazy. Town. Yeah, yeah like crazy. when I yeah. when I went to on my unofficial visit, Ohio State was the number one football team in the country, and we got the storm in the field. So I'm like, Badger this, what, Badger listen. that. It's funny that you mention that. You know why it's funny? The other day, I just interviewed John Clay, and he talked about yeah. when they beat. Oh, he played. He oh, was that's a running crazy. Back. He was there. He was yeah. He was, he was the okay. running back for the yeah. Badgers, and we talked about how they beat Ohio State when they was number one in the country, and that was one of the best games he ever had. That's crazy that you just mentioned that. Yeah, and we was we was I was at that game. Like I remember they mm -hmm. told us like all the recruits. We we hopped over the little thing and we was storming mm -hmm. the field. Crazy man. Mm -hmm. But um, you know they just was playing the game, and I just told my pops like, if they not go offer, let's just go ahead and go our separate ways. We ain't got to keep 
making the ties. Like they saying, like it was a game our sophomore year. We played Whitefish Bay. The word got out. Bo Ryan was supposed to come to the game. So Whitefish Bay chanting. Um, they was chanting overrated. Then they was ch- chanting like, "Where is Bo at?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was yeah. doing that like the whole game, but like Bo Ryan didn't come. So I'm like. I kind of was like just off Wisconsin, like it was over yeah. with early, yeah. and they tried to come back in the picture when Diamond came to high school because you know or they because they was recruiting them heavy, and they they was coming to the games. But you know I was, I had respect for them, but it was like I'm not messing with y'all, like it's over with. So wait, to go back to man. hold on real quick, let me ask you this because I I, I want to ask this question because I, I in an in an upcoming interview, um, I got Jordan Taylor coming on. Yeah. Play for Wisconsin, right? But the reason why I want to ask this though is because why do you think a lot of Milwaukee kids who get recruited by Wisconsin don't go to Wisconsin? And I just think I feel like the style of play isn't yes. It, it, it don't it don't it don't really fit us, you know. No, I don't get with, there. With, get, with, get with, there. With, with Devin, with Devin is a little bit different. As I got older, I watched the games, but Devin kind of was like. Man, he was like, uh, you know, he just stood out so much that no matter what offense they ran, he was going to be that. Get he, his. he was going to get his no matter what. You know what I'm saying? And then Bo, you know, Bo kind of tweaked it to let Devin do his thing. So it kind of was like Bo really going to have to let you, you know, trust you and let you do your thing if you go to Wisconsin. Right. So, you know, you know, after Devin – and you know the situation that happened with Boo Wade, like it was a a long time before you seen a, a city kid go to Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know, I feel like they would do their due diligence and, and offer kids mm-hmm. like Diamond and Looney because they feel like they had to. Right. But like knowing that you know, they, they probably wasn't gonna get them anyway. Right. Because they yep. didn't offer me or Deontay. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. Mm-hmm. Funny thing we, is, man. I I remember. I swear to God, I remember. Around this time frame, when I had people that was like, "Man, Dwayne Wilson going to Wisconsin," I said, "No, he's not." Uh, Kevon Looney's going to Wisconsin. I said, "No, he's not." Diamond Stone going to Wisconsin. I said, "Y'all are dreaming, bro. That style of play does yeah. not fit. It's, it's not a pro style. It's not a pro style. Right? It's not a pro style. So even when they were saying it, I was debunk- I was debunking it because I was like, "Yo, ain't no way in hell that these city kids who used to having a ball in their hand." used to having a, a motion offense or open offense for them to get their shit off, they're not going to Wisconsin. That flex offense is built for you to pass the ball. Or not flex, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't it flex. Was flex. It, it, yeah, it was flex. It is, it's flex. Read yeah. and react. Yeah, read and react, flex, and all of that shit. They, that's, that's what, man, that's what big man's yeah. shooters, bro. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, we're not, we're doing, not that. doing all that. We, we trying yeah. to get downhill, dribble, drive. You right. know what I'm saying? So, like, that and, – and speaking of Dribble John, that's why, like, I love Memphis so much. So, Memphis was my dream school. So, like, go back to – we jumped back to my junior year when I was taking my unofficial. So, you know, I'd say early on my freshman year, Memphis was on me early with mm-hmm. Pashley. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my junior year come, they on me heavy, you know, Pashley. Do, you, do it, you know where you played? You said where? Do you know – I'm asking, do you know where Pashley played? Uh, what – he ain't – well, it was Arizona, wasn't it? Arizona. He was on the national championship team with uh, Mike Bibby and Miles Simons. Yeah, because he yeah, was yeah. – because uh, he because he he had to connect with Houston Hoops, like all the Houston Hoop kids right. were going to Arizona. Right, and, right, you right, know, Because, right. you know, he had um, – because, matter of fact, so the, the coach that first seen me was uh was the mouse, Diamond, Damon Stoudemire. Mm-hmm. He was the first one that seen me. He was like – he told Passion, like, yeah, he, he liked that. No, so, he, you know, yeah. da- Damon was already on it. So you know he was all he, no, he no, Josh was too. I met Josh one time. Josh Mad Cool. That's the reason yeah, he, why I met Josh. Hey, Josh. Great, great, great recruiter. Great, mm-hmm. great dude. They showed me a lot of love when I went down to Memphis. Like I was ready to commit when I went to my unofficial. Wow. My, okay. My jun- junior what, year. Oh, nah, what's it? I had to be my sophomore year because I committed to Marquette. Man. No day, day so far back. I committed to Marquette my junior year, I think. So that okay. that and we'll get to there for sure, for sure. So, so yeah, I took I t- so I took the unofficial to Memphis. So I was ready to commit right then and there. Like Patterson are telling me, like I'm you the number one priority in the 2013 class for guards because like everybody knew the Harrison twins was party was go go to Kentucky, right? Casey Hill was either going to Kentucky or Florida. 
Marcus um, Page went to North Carolina. Yeah, he well, he was all yeah, he was already committed and he won that type of player. So like it was like me, a kill car, mm-hmm. and um Pookie Powell. He ended up going to Memphis, but he was ranked behind me. So I was the main priority for them to get it. Like they was like, we you were there with Khalil, right? Wasn't Khalil Iverson? Didn't he end up going? We was we was the same class. Yeah, we yeah, all the same class. Memphis, right? Karan, Iverson, Nick King, yeah. yeah Austin Karan, Nichols, Karan, they all Karan, Khalil, Karan, yeah, 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 right. they all they all they all went to Memphis, but I was gonna sign early, like sophomore mm-hmm. year. Like I was sold on Memphis, you know, just because of D Rose. Tyreek Evans, off all of what Kyler Perry did. Yep. Um, but you know, Pops, that's that's when Pops came in with the parents and like, don't jump yep. the gun, the gun too right. soon. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, let's see what Marquette's talking about. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I got I go back home, I go talk to Buzz. Mm-hmm. So what, what stood out, what stood out about Buzz was the conversation was nothing about basketball. That's that's different. From mm-hmm. at a, at sixteen years old, it's like all you hear is how great of a player you go be. The NBA this, the NBA that. But what about if I don't make it to the NBA? What if I get hurt? Mm-hmm. Buzz, Buzz was 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 talking like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you broke it down. To so you, yeah. once I went to go talk to Buzz, I'm like, oh, I'm going to Marquette sophomore year. Okay. And what's crazy is my freshman year, well, beginning of the sophomore year when they first offered me when that initial offer me, I'm like, I never stay home. Me and Deontay both said that. Me Burton? and Deontay Burton, yeah, because we both yeah. got offered at the same time. And I remember I called him and joking, like, let's go to Marquette. And he like, hell no, I'm going, I'm going out of state. And I'm like, yeah, you right, me too. Right. He in, he ended up kid, committing to Marquette first. And then I seen him, and then, you know, they had my cousin Jamil Wilson at Marquette already. They had Vander Blue. Yep. They was already having kids, like, you know, they had Dwight previous mm-hmm. years. So mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I ain't going to lie. Deontay, we can do something different, like right. So you know, I already knew I was going to Marquette. We kept it a secret. It actually was my junior year because after my mama and my pops was like, "You not go say nothing until you win state." So it's like, if you win state, so you can commit. Junior year, junior year, junior year. My, oh, my so first ring. Year. Okay, got you. My first, my first ring. So they was like, "That that's your gift. If you win state, you can commit to any school. You can commit to Marquette because that was like that's where I want to go. I was so." So okay. after we, we, we want we're gonna get there. Yeah, we definitely gonna okay. get there because because of you know, because I want to get to now I want to get to your your senior year in high school when y'all did the back to back, right? And I want to mm. show you something real quick. And this is the, the reason why I want to get here for a second, is because I want to show you something to see if you remember this. The state of Wisconsin is known as America's Dairy Land. But it's also home to one of the NFL's most historic franchises in the Green Bay Packers. But the state also has its fair share of quality basketball. Dwayne Wilson of Milwaukee, Wisconsin is certainly contributing to that. <laughs> I was young. High school is averaging about 26 points and four and a half assists per game. He's one of the top players in the Midwest and is comfortable at either guard spot. I'm more of a combo guard. I play the point, play the two. Bro, was you 12? <laughs> nah, I ain't got no facial hair, boy. I just comfortable both. Just get used to it after a while. Wilson is at his best as a point guard. Where he likes to get his teammates going before he tries to take over a game. But at the beginning of the game, it's more like get your teammates going because when you get your teammates going, especially like the big man, it's going to open up for you even more. So I usually try to get everybody else up and then... This was Wilson in Dallas at an EYBL event right here. A word? Okay. As he'll stay in Milwaukee and play for head coach Buzz Williams at Marquette University. Van, shout coach, out Van. Um, coach Buzz. Yeah, shout out Van. Program. It's another kid from Walker committed there. We're just trying to start something new. Being at home, you know, all your family comes to the games and you playing on NBA venue, so can't get no better than that. Wilson joins fellow Milwaukee native Deontay Burton and Jamil McKay in a strong 2013 recruiting class for the Golden Eagles. Who have been to back to back. That would have been the coldest trio ever. That's when Wilson arrives on campus. Bro, looking at that. So this is this is a dope thing. Because you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say this again because I be getting people hitting me up. Bro, you be lining these these highlights and stuff up, man. They know that they're about to see these highlights. Bro, I don't line none nah, of this. And I forgot about I I I forgot about see even even that that one you just showed me I ain't seen that one like since I was part like in high school I forgot all about that one yeah because this was before your senior year and that's why right. I wanted to show this lead, leading into your senior year yep yep so leading into your senior year 
you've already signed because you stated that you wasn't going to sign until you won a net or to the to the state championship, and you won mm-hmm. a state championship your junior year. So now we into your senior year. You already committed. At this point in time, since you've already committed, you take the foot off the gas, or we still full throttle. Yeah, and I'm, and I still was like had that chip on my shoulder because at that point it was like I wanted to commit because it was like I was tired of the, you know, I kind of knew what the visits was gonna be like. I probably should have took my official visits, but at the time it was like I just was sold on Marquette. You know, I got my big cousin there. Deontay going, Jamil coming. So it's like, we doing this for the city. That's the only, you know. Who else was recruiting you real quick, uh, Dwayne, before you signed, before you signed to uh, Marquette? Like, who else was, like, really on you that you really considered outside of Memphis? Arizona. Um, Ten- Tennessee. Virginia who Tech. At, who, who was at Arizona at the time as far as the uh, the head coach? Was that? Um, that's, Sean, that's Sean Miller. It was Miller. Okay, yep. Okay. Was trying, but what, what actually the Arizona situation happened, it was interest, and they really didn't want me hard until I was committed to Marquette. And I had we played at Boo Williams and I averaged like 30 the whole weekend. They mm-hmm. were trying to give me the they were trying to give me the decommit. Decommit because it was sign with them. Yep. It was rumors that Buzz was leaving Marquette. So they like, you know, you know, Buzz might be leaving. So we like, huh? Like it's the first time we're hearing this. Nah, for and, sure. You know, and, and Stoudemire went end up going to Arizona. Mm-hmm. So so that's how that came about, you know. So Arizona was on me tough because the start of my went that way. So, you know, them was really like my top. It was it was gonna be Marquette, Memphis, and Arizona. And I think, yeah, was it was it uh tennis Tennessee was 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 in the, because in the Bruce top. Pearl was still there. Yeah, I think no, I Bruce Pearl had got fired. Or did, or did, that, that, oh, was yeah, right. that was that was Quanzo. That was Quanzo. Yeah, Quanzo Bruce, Quanzo yeah, Martin. Right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Quanzo, Quanzo Martin was there, but like, um, I committed so early, I really even gave myself the chance to to really blow up. Because once I committed to Marquette, that's when I blew up on the whole AAU scene. Like I was God. leading the EYBL and scoring. So mm-hmm. like, I had UCLA trying to like, it was all types of schools trying to inter- intervene, in, like intervene and like try to get me to decommit. And stuff this, like this, that. So this like, is my question for you, though, bro, because, like, at, at 17, 16, 17 year, years old, and I asked this question to some people before, but I want to ask it to you, too, also. At this point in time, right, this is what you want. You want people to want you, right? Most definitely. So now, at this point in time, since you already committed to Marquette, you really can't take, or can you? Can you still take no. visits? Right. You can't, you can't you, tell you got right. you can't once you once you commit. I, I mean, I don't know because it's a verbal. It's just a verbal. You know what I'm saying? It was just a verbal oh, commitment. Oh, I, so didn't, I didn't signed. sign the paper. You, you don't you. sign the paper until your senior year. So it was just a mm-hmm. verbal commitment. Right. So that's why you still, know, still, still don't know if you, you still don't know if you're still able to take visits or not. You're still not sure. Yeah, I mean. You probably can, but the school you verbally committed to probably gonna be off you, and, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they gonna feel some type of way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Out of respect, so you know, I never took the, none of the visits that was offered to me, which is crazy you know, because once again, like this is, bro, you you can come back to the to the crib and be like, my G, listen, I just went to Memphis again, whatever. You know, I went to Arizona. I don't went to Tennessee. I don't went to. UCLA. I don't went to this place, this place, this place. This, where you go? So, but you, you, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Like just to have, yeah. a, you know, yeah. just like a, a, a sparring contest. But at this point in time, you already committed to Marquette. What? Why was that in your mind at this early age to say yes? It was it more so the buzz conversation that you had, or was it that you just didn't want to take those other visits? And it was really the conversation with Buzz, and then you know. I also always wanted to play with Deontay because me and him were always okay. for the same class. And it was you. like everybody used to try to co- try to put us against each other. And we like, bro, we really two different. If, if we play on the same team, we'll it's really different. destroy. Yeah. Right. So right. you know, so we like, you know what I'm saying? We can we can do something for the city. So it was more like we want to do this for the city. You know, we Milwaukee kids at the end of the day, you know how that goes. Like mm-hmm. we want to put on. So 
Right. That's that. That's what we was like. I was so st- I was firm on staying at Marquette. Like you know, even gotcha. the rumors and all the other stuff was pulling me it this way, that way. It didn't matter. And they was winning. You know, they sweet oh, sixteen. So what, so what type eight. of rumors were you hearing? What type of rumors were you hearing? They were saying Buzz was going to SMU. He was waiting mm-hmm. for a job in Texas because he was from Texas. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, they they was true. You know what I'm saying? But at yeah. that time. And the crazy thing is, we asked Buzz about the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. it was like I kind of wanted to see what Arizona was talking about. Mm. And then I asked, I asked Buzz like personally, like you know, it's a lot of people saying that you go leave, and he's like, say no. you know, yeah, exactly. Like, and he told me no, so I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm riding with you. So mm. that's that's what it was. So then I just I just stuck with Marquette. The rest of the, you know, my high school career, and then end up going to Marquette. Yeah, so end up going to Marquette. We kind of speed past past your senior year because you won another national championship. We already knew that you committed to Marquette, so we just gonna go to Marquette, right? So you end up going mm-hmm. to Marquette your freshman year. Who's at Marquette with you your freshman year? Uh, my older cousin Jamil Wilson, Devonte Gardner, Chris O'Toole, Todd Mayo, Juan Anderson. I play in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Taylor, he was a sophomore, and then our freshman quick, class. Shout out to Devontae because he having a hell of a seat, man. Devontae having a hell of a career overseas, bro. Oh yeah, Jamil, Korea from, from bro, day one. Everybody yeah, everybody that you mentioned is Jamil, Devontae. Shout out to all of them because yeah. they have bro. Man, it's crazy. When I say when I say from if if Vander stays at Marquette when I come in, we mm-hmm. winning it. We w- listen, he was the missing piece because you know, mm-hmm. Vander, like before I got there, like Vander was like he made them go, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like everybody looked to Van, so yeah. you lose that, like, yeah, Van was a that- transmission, Van was a transmission yeah. for sure, exactly. And you know, they thought Ty Mayo could kind of feel, but Ty was, Ty, I think Ty had like some academic, no, Ty, what happened? Some with Ty, he didn't play like that that year either, like he was hurt or something like that too. So they thought mm-hmm. Todd could kind of feel with Van because Todd Mayo was cold. That's OJ no, Mayo's nice. little brother. Yeah, he, he was, was cold. Nice. Mm-hmm. But if Van come back, we easily we we win it. We win it. We win in mm-hmm. Big East, and we for sure Final Four bound easily. Mm-hmm. So like losing losing Van hurt a lot into our freshman year. But if you look at talent on that team, Jamil was Jamil Wilson was supposed to be a first round pick. Devontae yeah. Gardner was supposed to be a, a at least a second round pick. So we had a lot, a lot, a lot of talent. Then you got to think Jawan Johnson that came in with me, Lou Will nephew. He was top twenty five in the country. Deontay, Jamil McKay, and then we had John Dawson from New Mexico. So we had a stacked team at Marquette my freshman year. You was there for your freshman, sophomore, and junior season, correct? Well, really four years. You know, I red shirt. You know, I got hurt my freshman year. For your freshman year, that's right. And then you were there for your junior. I mean, so, so for your. Actually, playing your freshman, sophomore, and junior season, right? Yeah, I played. I played okay. three years. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to speed past all of that, but so the injury that you sustained your freshman year, what was the injury that you sustained? I had um, I had a stretch fracture in my femur, mm-hmm. and and it was like, bro. So this is crazy, man. And this is how like these colleges, like you only they really beat your body down. So, you know, going into Marquette, you know, if you – anybody know Buzz Boot Camp? <laughs> Buzz Boot Camp is I'm laughing because I done heard this several times from bikes. It's from, insane. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. insane, bro. But even before the boot camp, the individuals, is harder than the boot camp. And when you hear individuals, you like, oh, it's basketball. No, it's not basketball individuals. It's right. like – it's technical stuff. Like, we doing cheat steps. So, like, you got to cross over, show your hands and shoot a weird way, like everything is fast. If you don't show your hands, it don't count. You got to run. Mm-hmm. And you got to get a certain, you got to make a certain amount of shots. It's all mental stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hooper. I'm trying to hoop. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to come out here and do conditioning and do all, like all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, that might work for Jimmy Butler. And you know, some of them dudes, Jay Crowder, but it's like, you got dudes that was like highly recruited. Them kids, they, they were junior college kids. You know what I'm saying? So like, they- No, no they diss was, to them either, but it is what it is. Right, exactly. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, it, it's different when you got top recruits coming out of high school, you know what I'm saying? That was recruited, highly recruited. They 
used to like, you, I'm thinking like, I'm finna come here. We finna work on what I need to work on and I'm finna get lead. Mm-hmm. We come in, we doing all this conditioning and like the boot camp, that stuff, they was beating on my body so bad. I didn't have broke my leg. And the thing is, I told Buzz and them that something was wrong with my leg. You know what he told me? Get your ass on that line and keep running. Like, I'm mm-hmm. telling them, going to the trainer every day, like, something wrong with my leg. Like, I'm in there in tears in there. Like, I can't run. Like, this shit getting out of hand. They they wave, like, they like waving me off. Like, you got to finish the boot camp. You know, I finished the boot camp, but I'm I'm on one leg at this point. Right, yeah, So yeah, yeah. I complete the boot camp and whatnot. So we get to, like, the first week of real practice. You know, that's, like, October. And it's like getting to the point, like, I can't even sleep at night because my leg is in so much pain. Wow. So it's like, bro, it gets, I, I go to the dude, like, bro, like, take me to the doctor. Like, I had to real life, like, get on that with the trainer. Like, like, take me to the doctor. I'm not playing with y'all. Like, something really wrong with my leg. So they mm-hmm. take me to the doctor. That's when they, oh, it's a Schwartz factor. And it's a femur. And he was, like, basically said, like, I was a few, like, few more steps away from breaking my whole leg. So I'm like, bro, I told y'all a month ago something was wrong with my leg. Y'all ignored the signs. And y'all want to be on this mentally mentally tough, trying to make it seem like I'm weak. And, like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't mentally tough enough. And I'm really telling y'all something wrong with my leg and something I come out. That's shit going on, right. I got some shit yeah. going on. So, you know, that was like a two, three-month injury. It's one of them injuries where you got to let it heal on its own. It's no surgery. Or nothing yeah. like that. You, you just you can't do nothing. It. You can't do shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't do nothing. So, you know, I went through that, and um, I'm thinking when I come back, I'm gonna be right back playing. You know, and like Buzz was the type of coach where his loyalty was to the guys who've been there longer. Mm. So he want to get the. It's nothing wrong with that when you a junior senior, but when you a freshman right. sophomore, you like I'm ready now. I want to play. Right. Right. I could have went here and played and, and been doing Memphis, my thing. Arizona, wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Go ahead, 